Hello Crafters! This is Suzanne from A Creative Muse, and I am over the moon excited to introduce you to Yana's release for Christmas in July at Spellbinders. This is the delightful Christmas collection, as I like to call it, Yana's Glimmer Glam Collection, or Glimmer Glamour. <laughs> The more I played with this collection, the more I was like, boy, this is a glamorous collection. Oh, you know what? This is Glimmer Glam. I go between Glimmer Glamour or Glimmer Glam. It's all Glimmer Glam goodness right here. Alrighty, crafters, let's just go right into this one. But before I do that, Yana. <laughs> love, 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 love. And everything glimmered easily too. Two thumbs up for that. So if you're new to Glimmer, don't be afraid of this collection. Even this one, Glimmer's like a dream. Alrighty, crafters, let's just go right into this video. Let's get started. This collection includes Glimmer goodness, a die set, 3D embossing folder, and a wax seal too, an oval wax seal. Be joyful. This one I will play with during the week because I'm going to do a wax seal video where I show you how to pour this one. So that one is coming, but fabulous, fabulous. Be joyful. Isn't that nice? So this can go beyond just Christmas. It could be all year round. Be joyful. Love that. Encouraging. So there is the Be Joyful wax stamp that would go with the wax seal kit. There are a lot of new wax seal beads too that are fabulous. Here we have poinsettia bloom. This is the die set. You're looking at four and a half inch wide and I'm going from the outline, three and a half inch tall. Yana has a fabulous video. So watch one of her recent videos where she shows you how to maximize using this set. You won't even really need to use the outline if you don't want to. You could, but you don't have to. The Let me go into now glimmer joyful glimmer this one absolute glimmer glam so is this one too <laughs> once i learned how to play with it properly show you what i did my first card then i watched yana's video and i was like oh okay that's what i really need to do and then i stepped it up <laughs> it's a two-part layering glimmer set this is the only one that when you use it you're going to have to do the flap technique and you can also watch Yana do that video where she glimmers it, she puts the tape, and she sticks the foil in. Because once you foil, and I have one example here done. Once you foil, joyful, then you go in with this. Notice how, yeah, I kind of messed up right here. But you have to go in on top of afterwards. You can't see to line this up because you put a piece of hot foil roll there. <laughs> so after I did the joyful, I lined it up like so but i put a big piece of foil so it was just the hinge method not a flap hinge i can still work with this i can trim it down and do a thing that's why i did not toss it so overall joyful only three and five eighths of an inch tall by let's say one and three quarters of an inch with everything on it you're looking closer to three and a half by almost three and three quarters. Okay. So you can go with Be Joyful alone, and then you can add this on. But the beauty of it being two separate pieces, you can choose two different colors. So here I did Satin Metallics Hot Foil Roll in the dark gold. Then I did matte gold for the florals. You see it? And it's good that I don't have it as a card because now you can really see it just by itself on some hammer mill cardstock. With the hammer mill cardstock, I can come in with alcohol markers, like Olo markers, Copic markers, and then color it in, which I did on my example. Love, glimmer, glam release. Speaking of more glamour, we have the delightful Christmas hot foil plate. Love. And I have an example here. See, this one is waiting to go on a card because I made more than one. This particular release, I made multiples, especially this, but we'll get into the excitement in a second. This is coming in at five and a quarter by three and a half. Whichever cardstock you want to try, let's say it's a color, always feel the cardstock before you glimmer on it. Go with the smoothest side. If you can't tell just by rubbing your hand on it, close your eyes and go, which side, which side? I'm closing my eyes right now. I can tell this is the smoother side, okay? But I will put a link for this Diane Revley because I've had great success with it, whether I'm using it for sentiments or for something big like this. Here it is used on a sentiment too. 
which is also from Yana's collection, okay? A string of lights. And with your string of lights, you could put the sentiment in here, have a delightful Christmas. I like the play on words, delightful Christmas. And then you have options here. So you can glimmer the base of the string lights. You can also die cut it. I die cut and I also die cut here. This is the full light. So you put that light on and then you can put the glimmer version, which you would die cut or just a die cut. I did the die cut. Fabulous, fabulous. This is all like fun too. I love the fun, play and elegance of Glimmer Glam. <laughs> this one, my by far runaway hit. How many times did I glimmer this one? She's called the Glimmer Holly Background. And she also has a coordinating stencil if you want to purchase. I highly recommend getting the stencil. Oh, she is good. I have not done coloring with alcohol markers yet. Oh, that's coming though. How many times did I glimmer this? Not once, not twice. It's like the poem, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. Black and white, black and white, black and silver. That's matte silver. Black with opaque white. So this is opaque white and opaque black hot foil roll. Red with opaque black hot foil roll. Again, feeling the cardstock. This is rougher, this is smoother. Look how this thing glimmered. Every single thing I glimmered with this background came out good. Nothing overfoiled and I had no mistakes on all versions of it. Navy blue, this is basil cardstock. Again, smooth side with the opaque white. This is partly cloudy. This is Spellbinders cardstock with satin navy hot foil roll. But I don't see this satin navy. I have a few of it. I'll look and see if this is back in stock at Spellbinders, but I love satin navy too. Like satin navy with the white. I could make another one of that. Along with my card examples, this is the extras that I made. Yeah. My machine was loving this collection. She was just glimmering away. <laughs> so Glimmer Holly background. And like I said, it has a coordinating stencil. It's called the Layered Glimmer Holly background stencil. It does have numbers. You're getting a four piece stencil set. Number one, right there. This one is easier to see. Number two, you see the right here by my fingertip right there. Number two. So all these stencils are numbered so you'll know which side is up and how to layer it. I did it in the order that the stencils came in. When you hot foil, there's gonna be some little gaps. That's part of the background play. It's as Yana calls it, an artistic interpretation. So it has a more like a watercolor quality to it. You know how watercolor, when you look at watercolor sometimes, it's not just fully every single line. I know we love to have that, I did not even notice it. Let me tell you, when I glimmered this thing, I was like, oh, Yana was talking about that artistic thing. Where is it? But I can see the little gaps. So now when it comes to the stencil, and you can watch her video because she both used the stencil, ink it all up, and she also colored it. I have not done the coloring yet. Oh, that's coming. Look how many versions I have to use. And when you line it up, she says it will line up like this loosely, but it lined up pretty well. See how it's not going all the way to that edge of the line, but it still lines up good. So you just have to line it up like so. It does have a registration mark again on two ends, top left and bottom right by where the number is. You see the registration? So you can use a pencil if you want and do your two spots and then you will always have that alignment. So happy with this stencil. You'll see it in my examples and Oh, the inks. The inks were happy to play with this one, too. <laughs> Let me tell you, I love this set. Out the gate, winner, winner. And glimmers like a dream, as you can see, over and over and over again. Then I spoke about this wonderful sentiment set in yesterday's video, Classic Christmas, which I will link here because this glimmer with a coordinating die with the sentiments Merry Little Christmas Sentiments. Oh, Yana, I love this set so much. I have not even used this part yet, <laughs> but it's there. You can make this longer, put something at the bottom. These sentiments, that's what I was going for. When I'm in factory mode, that's what I'm going for. I was going for the, wow, this is easy to work with. And oh my goodness, 
So I made a bunch of these and they're just fabulous. Card done. <laughs> you can make For the crafter who has to make a lot of masculine cards, this background works fabulously. I have a masculine card that I'm going to show you with an example, but look at it just here with the sentiment. Done. You could use seal twine if you want to add a little twine look. That's the die, but just an amazing set. And you can go smaller and you can add this too. I love this. And one of my favorites too, I was using happy holidays. So I just made a bunch here. <laughs> I use these glimmer sentiments within her collection. I can go outside her collection. This one is classic Christmas, but I showed yesterday. Look at that, just fabulous. And I love the scaling of this Yana, great scaling. You have small and then she also has large and bold. It depends on what projects you have to do, how many projects you wanna make. If you wanna gift someone a box of cards, let's say around Thanksgiving, for them to then send out Christmas cards and that's your gift to them. You could glamour a ton of this. You could choose to leave it the way it is. You could also color it and then use a bunch of these sentiments and gift it to that person or make a kit, card kit. Oh, this, I tell you, glamorous. Now, when you see my examples, you're gonna be like, oh, Suzanne, you were having fun. Yes, I was. And the last thing in this collection, which is last but not least, this Holly and Foliage 3D embossing folder. She is the sister to this one, but the stencils here don't fit here, okay? So the scaling is a little bit bigger than this, but fabulous all the way around winner. All right, let's look at my card examples. I just so loved these two. Masculine card, yes, 100% masculine too, no gems. This one is the one I call my greeting card. Again, no gems. This particular card, when I made it and I finished it, I was like, should I put the gem? And then something kept on restraining my hand back. And this card, I was like, this looks like a greeting card. Like I would buy in the store. Both of these are using the coordinating stencil. I went traditional colors here, a different colorway. And this one, I think, turned out great for masculine cards. Hint, hint to the viewer that has to do a lot of masculine cards. This one. Tell me if you love it. Please let me know in the comments. Notice the large sentiment, the background. I just differentiated the sentiment from the background using another favorite that can so work with this. That's the essential diamond dies. I layered up brushed silver cardstock. If you think that the little pearlescent shine from brushed silver is too much for you, you could just go gray and it would be great. This one I played, I was really having fun with this one, let me tell you. So I used, there was a recent sale at Spellbinders and I showed you guys that I had hauled A2 precision layering die, A and B, five by seven matting basics, A and B. That's what's here, the matting basics, but I'm keeping this out because it's coming back. I was having fun with these sets. There's also the precision layering mini slimline and I got these all on sale. I made a frame by putting one with the other, and this is an eighth of an inch. And then I use wet glue and I did what I love to do all the time, recess it like it's a shaker. If it was a shaker, I would have put acetate here and then have something on the inside, but I'm glad it didn't turn it into a shaker. So on the side here, you're gonna see that I have foam. I have foam throughout and I made a frame using this die. That's why these dies are nice because you can, of course, cut a five by seven layer to make cards. Once you start to play with this, you can make frames. I do have this at four and a half by five and five eighths. That's the measurement that I have for this because I still wanted to enjoy all of this holly background goodness. But I used here some gold foil cardstock from my stash to make that eighth of an inch. And then inside here, satin metallics hot foil roll. After I made the card, I was like, wow, this looks like a greeting card going to take it a step further. When I had cut it out, this background, I had this piece left over. I'm going to put it back in. This also looks good too. Put that in and look at what I can do too. I can make another card. <laughs> Glimmer glam. I love it. 
glimmered like a dream. This again, Satin Metallics Hot Boy Row, that dictated this color. And this is Hammer Mill cardstock that I used, okay? So love. <laughs> and then here we have May Your Days Be Merry and Bright. I tell you, these bold sentiments. Just finish the cards. You don't have to go any further. Now let's talk about the inks, especially on the masculine card. If you have to make some and you're like, Suzanne, I'm loving this hot foil plate. This is opaque black. And like I said, satin metallics, hot foil roll, the dark gold. In yesterday's video, I mentioned that scrapbook.com is now carrying Gina K inks. I don't have her full size. I just have her little ink cubes. Do you have to get everything I got? No. I started out being curious and curiosity led me pretty much into getting her entire line because I like it that much. I even watch her videos and she says she has a smoothing agent. I'm like, I don't know. For me, ink blending with it is fabulous. I don't have to sit there forever because I have wrist pain here, okay? And I find that her stuff works. So let me tell you what I did here. For the masculine card, for my friend out there, if you want to recreate this, you're looking for soft stone, stormy sky, and slate. The combination is soft stone and stormy sky is a light color. In these darker ones, you're looking at slate. The blues in the navy, right there in the center, blue denim with a mix of powder blue, okay? Now, when I had done this and this, it was still looking kind of close. So I did bring in Olo markers in a dark blue just to tap this because alcohol markers can work on dye ink. And so I just kind of darkened it up just a little bit more. So if you wanted, you could mix in the navy with one of these grays to darken up the center berry. But that's all I did. Easy. Then I decided to take out the essential diamonds with the brush silver layered up two pieces of it and put that sentiment this sentiment is layered about three times and i have it on a black background 110 pound cardstock this is a2 but i decided to go an eighth of an inch because i wanted the contrast of black so this is like my first very happy masculine card like normally i struggle with them this one easy glimmer glam this one now, it's a little different. This is an ink set that I got from Altenew. I believe it's these two here, forest, fern, here, if you love the colorway. For the reds, and I'm gonna link all of this stuff below too so you can see, and I'm gonna put the names of them if you're interested in recreating this. With the reds, I came back in with Gina Kay's Faded Brick and Red Velvet, but so cute. Love, love, love. And I love that I used the dye to do that raised with this recessed in there. And I was so tempted to put a gem on both. Decided not to. Don't need it. I think these are just fabulous. Fabulous. Glimmer glam. <laughs> Next example. I have been inspired by Jennifer McGuire's videos where she uses acetate. And she would layer it on the inside and do all this stuff. This card was the one that was like, okay, I feel like I'm in a workshop <laughs> a little bit <laughs> because I decided to make my frame too small. If I had made my frame just a little bit thicker, this would have been so much easier, but I was going for it and I was playing with what I've seen in her video. Sometimes I watch her videos and I'm like, oh, that's great. And I don't practice the technique I see. I was having so much fun with these two. Let me go into the a2 version of it. Precision layering A2 A and B. Sometimes this goes on sale. This one has 16 dies in each. Why would you need A and B in both the 5x7 mini slimline and this? Because what you are getting with this set is that eighth of an inch layering. Most dies that are increments are usually quarter of an inch, like this layering set, Essential Diamonds. Between here, adding here and here, you're at a quarter of an inch. You're at an eighth of an inch around. You're at a sixteenth of an inch around, meaning one eighth. So this die set will get you into this kind of layering if you want. And I, I've seen it and I was like, you know what? Let me get it. And I'm glad I did because it assisted me in making these frames. But I was going with this thin frame and tortured myself. <laughs> so in the back, I had to make a flap. Then I had to attach my flap to this little piece here, which drove me 
absolutely crazy because I had cut this frame out in black cardstock. It's not hard. It was like playing with layers and figuring out the mechanics of how to add the back to this. I did red glimmer hot foil roll, black opaque out here. Then I took my Olo markers and colored this in. Okay. And I brought in gems this time. I bought the green gems to go with the greens. And then I found a basil cardstock with the texture to go in the back here and mat it again. You see the matting, how thin it is? That's what these dies help you to do and help you to cut these super slim frames if you want. This frame is actually thinner than this. And I love that look of the acetate. And I did put an eighth of an inch score here just so that the card doesn't kick like this, but it lays flat, it'll stand. What do you guys think? Love, love, love this play with the frame frame. This inspired that frame, that frame inspired this, and then the acetate came into play via Jennifer McGuire memory. <laughs> you guys are like, oh, Suzanne. Next, delightful Christmas hot foil plate. This is it in satin metallics, but that platinum look. It's not rose gold, because their rose gold is more like a coppery look. This is that platinum hot foil roll. You see it? Ooh, 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 love. And then I took Brush silver cardstock, cut it out with the die right here. Red foil roll here for the lights. Put that on the top and then just laid them over the spots where the lights are. And then I use some silver mixed gems, the solid part here, and use one of Yana's sentiments, Christmas blessing. Another option could have been the happy holidays. I was looking at that, but I did like how this one fit. This is hammer mill cardstock. Put a sliver of black and then a sliver of gray here. And it is a top folding card. And this is an A2 top folding card. Isn't this nice? Even though I have this raised up and this here, it doesn't have much height at all. For putting it in the mail, it shouldn't cost you much. And lastly, here are my two cards. Can you see the difference? Me playing with the die set, then I watch Yana's video, and then I graduated to this. <laughs> and I love the coloring of it. I did put the die pieces together fine. This is just more flat to me. So I'm loving this one. Both cards are using the same embossing folder. That's mahogany cardstock. This is Spellbinders Alabaster. So mahogany and alabaster, both at Spellbinders. And it's the holly and foliage 3D embossing folder. Love this embossing folder. Plus from the classic Christmas collection, vintage ornaments. Like I was thinking of doing vintage ornaments. Both of these are just so good. They're both 3D embossing folders. Oversized too. Five and a half inch wide, eight and a half inch tall. This one is a top folding landscape card. And this is a portrait five by seven card. One of Yana's sentiments with the die. And she has a great video of how to do this one too. I use some Copic markers to color this up. In her example, she had taken one of the die cuts and she just cut it. So I cut it and put it here. And I wanted to have a bold sentiment. So this time I reached for the classic Merry Christmas die. Love this die right here. I showed it to you before because this is from the classic Christmas collection. Alabaster matte gold foil cardstock. I think this is a lovely, elegant card. This is another one that looks like a greeting card to me. I was thinking of putting gems on it, but I think the sparkle here is enough and I still enjoy the texture of the background. That's why I didn't want to put more on it. I don't think it needed Over it. here, I did put gems here because this one looks flatter to me than this. And these two are the same thing. But for some reason, this looks more popped up. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if it's the illusion with the darker interior and the lighter. Maybe this is all too much of one colorway. So I just wanted to show you that it's okay. It got better. <laughs> Fabulous die set, Yana. Fabulous collection. Glimmer, glam. Okay, crafters, in summary, everything here will be detailed and linked below. I'll even include the fabulous inks if you want to give it a try. If you're making masculine cards, why not give this blue and gray colorway? It could also be red and gray too. I might do that one because I have another panel, don't I? <laughs> Alrighty, crafters, thanks so much for watching. Yana, 
knocked it out the park winner love this collection delightful christmas collection or as i like to call it yes glimmer glam all righty crafters on to the next video stay crafty my friends bye